Okay, good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. My name is Councilmember Daniel Drum and I'm the chair of this committee. I hope everyone had an enjoyable Thanksgiving. Uh, we have been joined today by Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer, Councilmember Adrian Adams, Councilmember Keith Powers, Councilmember Steve Matteo, and Councilmember Francisco Moya, and we're hoping the other council members will join us shortly. Uh, but we're gonna go directly into the hearing and hear testimony as well. Today we have three items on the agenda and an Article 11 property tax exemption and two bid items. Let's start with the land use item, which is 451 to 455 East 116th Street in Manhattan. Uh, council member um, Ayala's district in Manhattan. The property will receive a partial 40 year property tax exemption to preserve 53 units of affordable housing under the city's HDFC program. Council member Ayala is supportive of the project. Uh, next, we'll hold a public hearing on the two bid items, intro 1226 and intro 1227. Intro 1226 relates to the establishment of the Throgs Neck Business Improvement District in Council Member Jonai's district. On November 14th, this committee voted um, out, voted on resolution 615 to set today as the hearing date to hear from individuals who may be affected by the proposed establishment of the bid. The proposed Throgs Neck Grid is located in, in, the, in the southeast portion of the borough of the Bronx in the neighborhood of Throgs Neck and in Bronx Community Board 10. The proposed district extends along both sides of East Tremont Avenue from Bruckner Boulevard to Miles Avenue. The proposed district is a low density residential area of 180 properties with substantial commercial overlay. The bid, project, the, the bid projects a first year budget of $340,000 uh, in which it proposes to offer such things as maintenance and sanitation services, marketing and retail attraction services, and administration and advocacy, advocacy services. Councilmember Jonai supports the establishment of the proposed Throsnick bid. Intro 1227 relates to the Hudson Square bid in Speaker Johnson's district. On November 14th, this committee voted on Resolution 616 to set today as the hearing date to hear from individuals who may be affected by the proposed changes to the bid. The Hudson Square bid was first established in 2008 primarily to address issues presented by the area's increased commercial and residential popularity with its proximity to the Holland Tunnel. In October 2013, the district plan was amended for the establishment of the special Hudson Square zoning district to create a new assessment class for residential properties developed under the new special zoning district. The bid is currently requesting that the council approve the following changes to the district plan. One, an extension of the bid boundaries further west along Canal Street to West Street and further north from West Houston to Clarkson Street. And two, a $1,400,000 increase in its annual assessment from $2,500,000 to $3,900,000. Speaker Johnson supports the proposed extension and other changes to the bid. For both bid items, we will first hear from any witnesses to, uh, who wish to testify. Once we have heard any testimony, uh, we will then adjourn the hearing for uh, at least 30 days to allow any property owner within the proposed area of the bid to file an objection to the establishment or extension of the bid with the city clerk. In the absence of, obje of, obje of, obje uh, of objections filed, either by the majority of all of the impacted property owners or by property owners owning a majority of the assessed value of the property within the proposed bid, the committee and the full council may adopt the legislation establishing the Throgs Neck bid and expanding the Hudson Square bid respectively. In order to do so, the committee and the full council must be prepared to answer the following four questions in the affirmative. One, were all notices of hearings for all hearings required to be held, published and mailed as so required? Two, does all the real property within the district's boundaries benefit from the establishment or expansion of the district except as otherwise provided by the law? Is all real prop three, is all real property benefited by the district included within the district? And four, is the establishment or expansion of the district in the best interest of the public? If the committee and the full council find in the affirmative on these four questions and the number of objections required to prevent uh, the establishment or expansion of the bids are not filed, then the legislation can be adopted. Additionally, for the Hudson Square bid, the committee and the full council must determine that it is in the public interest to authorize an increase in the maximum annual expenditure amount 
that the relevant tax and debt limits will not be exceeded and that notice of the proposed of the increased proposed expenditure amount was properly published for further details on the two bids please refer to the committee reports the city planning commission reports and the bids proposed district plans Representatives from the Department of Small Business Services are here to provide testimony on the two bid items. SBS, please come up and uh, my counsel will, sw will swear you in. Do you affirm that your testimony will be truthful to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Good morning, Chair Drummond, members of the Finance Committee. I am Michael Blaze Backer, Deputy Commissioner of Na for Neighborhood Development at the Department of Small Business Services. I'm joined by our Bid Program Director, Roxanne Early, and our Senior Program Manager for Bid Demel Development, Lamel Lindsay. We are here to testify in support of the proposed Throg Snag Business Improvement District. At SBS, we are working hard to open doors for New Yorkers across the five boroughs, focusing on creating stronger businesses, connecting New Yorkers to good jobs, and fostering thriving neighborhoods. We believe that the vitality of the city's commercial quarters is a key part of achieving this goal, and bids have been valuable and proven partners in revitalization and economic development efforts across the five, all five boroughs. In addition to our role overseeing and supporting the city's existing network of 75 bids, SBS also supervises the bid formation and expansion process, serving as an advisor and resource for communities interested in developing or expanding bids. Every year, SBS works with numerous communities throughout the five boroughs and are in various stages of bid formation or expansion. Throughout the process, we are careful to ensure that each steering committee we work with adheres to our planning policies and procedures, solicits robust community input, and performs extensive outreach to collect and demonstrate broad-based support across all stakeholder groups. Moreover, we are cognizant of the unique nature of each community we assist and aim to empower local stakeholders to make determinations on proposed services, boundaries, and budget size that best suit their community's needs and their appetite and ability to pay assessments. While we always impart strong planning principles and share our data and best practices from across the bid network when working with any community, bid formation is fundamentally a community-driven process and we recognize that the power and effectiveness of bids rests in the unmatched understanding of local needs and issues. Similar to other recent bid formations that SBS has overseen, the Throg's Neck bid formation effort involved numerous meetings and consultations with local stakeholders throughout the planning and outreach phases. After an extensive outreach effort and close coordination with all key parties, SBS determined that the documented support among all stakeholder groups, including over 50% of the area's total assessed value providing written support in favor, was sufficient to submit the application to the legislative process. As required by law, the Throgs Next Steering Committee mailed the summary of the City Council resolution, no less than 10 days and no more than 30 days before today's hearing, to the following parties. To each owner of real property within the proposed district at the address shown on the latest City Assessment Roll, to such persons as are registered with the City to receive tax bills concerning real property within the district, and to tenants of each building within the proposed district. Furthermore, SBS arranged for the publication of a copy of the summary of the resolution at least once in the City record. Additionally, I would like to acknowledge and thank Councilmember Mark Joni for his ongoing support of the Throgs Neck bid formation effort. Lastly, I would like to acknowledge that representatives of the bid formation effort are here today to testify and address any specific questions that I am unable to answer. At this time, I'm happy to take any questions. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I uh, thank you very much for coming in and for giving okay. testimony. And I think you, I'm going to do, uh, I think, the second testimony now, if that's easier for you all. Okay. Um, I will, uh, you have a full copy of my testimony. I'll probably skip the first three or four paragraphs since they are very similar. Uh, but uh, again, I'm, I'm Michael Blaze, back here, Deputy Commissioner for Neighborhood Development. And I'm here also to testify in support of the expansion of the Hudson Square Business Improvement District. Similar to other recent bid expansions that SBS has overseen, the Hudson Square expansion effort involved numerous meetings and consultations with local stakeholders throughout the planning and outreach phases. Additionally, the steering committee organized many community sessions, held informative public displays, and distributed various supplemental material to inform the community. After extensive outreach and close coordination with all key stakeholders, SBS determined that the documented support among all stakeholder groups, including over 50% of the area's total assessed value signing in favor, was sufficient to submit the application into the legislative process. 
As required by law, the Hudson Square Expansion Steering Committee mailed a summary of the City Council resolution no less than 10 days and no more than 30 days before today's hearing to the following parties. To each owner of real property within the proposed district at the address shown in the latest City Assessment Roll, to such persons as are registered with the City to receive tax bills concerning real property within the district, and to tenants of each building within the proposed district. Furthermore, SBS arranged for the publication of a copy of the summary of the resolution at least once in the City Record. Additionally, I would like to acknowledge and thank Speaker Corey Johnson and Councilmember Margaret Chin for their ongoing support of the Hudson Square bid expansion effort. Lastly, I'd like to acknowledge that the bid expansion effort is also represented here today by the President of the Hudson Square bid and members of the Expansion Steering Committee who will also be providing testimony. Thank you and happy to take any questions. Okay, any questions? All right, thank you very much for coming in and for giving testimony. And now I'd like to call up our next panel. Okay, so I'm going to call up um, our former colleague of ours, Steve Kaufman from Throgsnick Bid, and Bob Jane, I hope I pronounced that correctly, also from the Throgsnick Bid. Oh, I got to start all over. Do I have to mention prehistoric times? Okay. Uh, I want to thank you all for giving us a hearing to establish a bid in the Throgs Neck area of the Bronx. As a former president of the Throgs Neck Merchants Association and now legal counsel, I'm proud to work with such an incredible merchants association. Unfortunately, over the years, it has become apparent the negative impact the Tremont Commercial Corridor within Throgs Neck area has been surrounded by malls, chain stores, and the Hutch Metro Center, which houses many medical centers, city agencies, offices, and offices. Vacancies abound on Tremont Avenue. The merchants voluntarily undertook the Herculean effort to establish a bid in the Tremont area, stretching from Miles Avenue in the south to Bruckner Boulevard in the north. Numerous public meetings were held Mailings were sent, door-to-door -door solicitation by the members were done, surveys were undertaken, articles and advertisements were placed in the local newspapers. After many discussions, reason prevailed, and the merchants, knowing that they would be assessed $38 a linear foot, voted overwhelmingly 144 to 28 for a bid. The owners similarly voted to accept the bid by an assessed valuation of 27 million eight hundred thousand dollars to eight million eight hundred thousand dollars in the negative we ask for your support today for our survival as a vibrant commercial corridor and a wonderful middle class area is dependent on it the merchants who will eventually foot the bill overwhelmingly supported the bid many feel that without the bid the united advocacy for the merchants and owners and the enhancement that it brings will be faced in a precarious position with the bid there will be a renaissance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, please. Uh, good morning, uh, council chair and fellow council members. My name is Bob Jean, and I would like to thank you for the opportunity to testify on behalf of the proposed Throgs Neck Improvement District in the Bronx. As the, pre as the recent president of the Throgs Neck Merchants Association, I can truly say that we are blessed to have a great merchants association. Several years ago, the members in the Merchants Association were both saddened and frustrated to see the Tremont Commercial Corridor within Throgs Neck neighborhood, surrounded by the development of big chains such as Target and Co-op City, one of the largest indoor malls in the country nearby. In response to these changes, the Throgs Neck Merchants formed the Steering Committee in 2014 and proposed to establish the BID. Along East Tremont from Bruckner Boulevard to the northern part of uh, uh, Miles Avenue South. Uh, over the past few years, the Throgs Neck Steering Committee, in coordination with the New York City Small Business Services, has worked diligently uh, through the bid formation process. 
Throughout this process, the steering committee held numerous public meetings, distributed surveys, identifying local challenges, sent ballots to every stakeholder in the district, published notifications in several local newspapers, and engaged stakeholders in person. As a result of our efforts, the Throgs Neck bid formation effort received support from over 50% of the area's total assessed value. On behalf of the Throgs Neck Steering Committee, we ask for your support today so that the Throgs Neck can continue to be a vibrant commercial corridor. Many folks in our community, including the overwhelming support from merchants, feel that a bid and its ability to enhance our community and advocate our behalf is necessary for our success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you to this panel for coming in. Good to see you all and good luck with your work. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, and before I call up the next panel, let me just say we have been joined by Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, Councilmember Andy Cohen, Councilmember Barry Grudenchik, and Councilmember and Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Our next panel uh, is Jill Salehi, I hope I said that right, from the Hudson Square bid and um, Ellen Baer from the Hudson Square bid as well. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Finance Committee members. I'm Ellen Baer, President of the Hudson Square Business Improvement District. Formed in 2009, our bid has been successfully transforming the public realm in Hudson Square, known to many of you as the former printing district, now a major media and technology hub into a place for people, not just cars and trucks bound for the Holland Tunnel. One of very few bids that does not provide supplementary sanitation services, our focus has been on pedestrian safety services through our signature pedestrian safety manager program and the implementation of our $27 million public-private partnership with the city, Hudson Square is now. With help of our council member, Speaker Corey Johnson, to date, we have planted or retrofitted 250 trees using an award-winning innovation in green infrastructure, have completed a $5 million renovation of the new Spring Street Park on 6th Avenue, and are beginning construction of a protected bike lane with a widened sidewalk with new greening, seating, and lighting along Hudson Street from Canal to Houston. The bid in the city each contributes 50% of capital expenditures to Hudson Square is now, and there are no attendant expense budget costs for the city. The original boundaries of the bid complement what would eventually become the Hudson Square Special District. It has become abundantly clear that the existing bid boundaries do not match the physical, economic, or environmental boundaries of the neighborhood. Throughout the first nine years of the bid, we've consistently heard from bus businesses just outside our boundaries asking for the amenities and services available to bid members. Recent rezoning, such as 550 Washington, have created an opportunity to better tie together the neighborhood and improve physical connections to surrounding neighborhoods and open spaces. In July 2016, we convened a steering committee representing the variety of commercial st stakeholders in both the existing bid and potential expansion area to explore this issue of better aligning bid and neighborhood boundaries. For the past two years, the steering committee in coordination with the New York City Department of Small Business Services has been leading an expansion process that has involved extensive community outreach. Building on the city's outreach template, we have held local visioning sessions, installed interactive displays in public areas, and designed engaging mailer materials to get extensive feedback about the needs of the expansion to area stakeholders. Based on that feedback, the steering committee is proposing a plan with the following key components. Expansion of the current bid boundaries beyond the Hudson Square Special District to encompass the entire neighborhood, including major gateways on the north, south, and west. Services consistent with those offered by the bid, pedestrian safety management, streetscape planning and design, retail and marketing, advocacy, and maintenance of improvements we install. To cover these additional services, the Steering Committee has proposed an increase to our annual budget from $2.5 million to $3.2 million initially, over the, uh, with the ability to increase the budget to $3.9 million over time. Increases above the initial $3.2 million would require our Board's approval. 
The Hudson Square Bid Expansion Steering Committee and our many engaged stakeholders look forward to advance, advancing the bid expansion in the coming months and to the opportunity to serve the entire Hudson Square neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Finance. I have to turn that mic on. Is it on? No, you just need to push the button and the little red light will come on. Thank you. Okay. So good morning. Uh, Mr. Chair and Finance Committee members, my name is Jill Salai and I am the co-chair of the Hudson Square Business Improvement District Expansion Steering Committee. I am also the general manager at Workman Publishing, an independently owned family of publishers with 225 employees working out of our offices at 225 Varick Street located in the bid expansion area. Workman's been at the Varick Street location for almost 14 years, and I have personally witnessed the dramatic transformation of the neighborhood, particularly the results of the bid's efforts directly to our south along Varick Street. I am proud to have co-chaired the Expansion Steering Committee over the past two years and to be presenting our proposed bid expansion on behalf of the committee. Our steering committee has represented diverse viewpoints of the neighborhood and engaged in thoughtful consideration of the neighborhood's identity and expansion area stakeholders' needs at every step of the way. Beyond my role on the steering committee, I feel personally that the bid expansion is critical for bringing about the kind of positive neighborhood change that our company and its employees need. The intersection of Varick and Clarkson Streets situated at the northeast corner of our building poses a significant pedestrian safety challenge for our employees. On a typical day during the evening commute hours, Holland Tunnel bound and local crosstown traffic become tangled in this poorly designed intersection, blocking crosswalks and pitting aggravated drivers against pedestrians trying to safely reach local transit destinations such as the West 4th Street subway station. On more than one occasion, employees have reported to me in tears about nearly being struck by a vehicle. It is critical that steps be taken to improve this situation, and I believe that the BID's Pedestrian Safety Manager Program and proposed design changes to the Varick clarkson intersection will go a long way toward creating a safer environment for our people. In today's competitive environment, workplace quality of life is a key component in attracting and retaining a talented workforce. And in a city like New York, workplace quality is driven very much by the quality of the surrounding streets, sidewalks, and open spaces. The bid has done a great job in humanizing the street level experience on the blocks just south of us with all of the greening and seating that has been added under the bid's streetscape program. Many of our employees have passionately voiced their desire for those sidewalk amenities on our block, which currently exist as a barren slab of space, only adding to the overwhelming feeling of the adjacent traffic. Additionally, improved connections to Hudson River Park are badly needed, as our neighborhood is underserved by open space, which plays an important role in the health and wellness of our employees. Hudson River Park, a first-class open space, is located just a quarter mile from our office, but the uninviting and sometimes unsafe conditions of the connecting pedestrian corridor on Houston Street serve as a major deterrent to accessing the park. The potential for remaking this corridor into a pedestrian-friendly corridor promises to unlock the incredible value of the Hudson River Park for our employees, and to that end, we would greatly benefit from the bid streetscape services. Thank you very much for the opportunity to testify today. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you very much, and we uh, thank, thank you for coming in and giving testimony today. All right. Uh, before I ask Billy Martin, the committee clerk, to call the roll, I'd like to remind my finance colleagues that we'll be holding a joint hearing tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. in Chambers with the Committee on Civil Service and Labor on the health care savings agreement that was signed as part of the recent labor contract settlements. And with that, I'm going to ask uh, our clerk, Billy Martin, to call the roll. Billy Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, Committee on Finance, LU-264. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Cohen. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, I just uh, one second, I uh, did see our colleague, Council Member uh, Joe Nye this morning, 
and he just asked me to express his appreciation for all the hard work that went into uh, getting the th new Throgsneck bid to this point and wanted to encourage all of his colleagues to vote aye. So because he encouraged me, I'm gonna vote aye on all. Thanks. Combo. I vote aye. Rosenthal. I vote aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Gordenchik. Adams. Aye. Moya. Aye. Powers. Aye. Matteo. Aye. My vote of 10 in the affirmative is zero in the negative and no abstentions. The item has been adopted by the committee. Okay, I want to thank everybody for coming. And with that, this uh, hearing is adjourned at, at 10, 10.50 in the morning. Yep. Last week.